hello everyone uh, today i have a special guest she is a palmistry scholar and uh, she has been studying palmistry from uh, many years and uh, you have uh, been uh, you have studied more about the western uh, palmistry and you also have some knowledge about vedic palmistry right correct yeah so yeah so we'll start the podcast so what exactly is palmistry according to you well palmistry is basically an umbrella term and it encompasses a lot of different aspects palmistry is the same as chirology um and chiromacy and so there's a couple different fields of thought in regards to analyzing a hand some yeah. people look at the form of the hand they look at how it's shaped they look at the lengths of the fingers um and that's chirognomy yeah. that's one way of analyzing the hands okay there's also chiromancy which is analyzing the lines only okay. and then chiromancy and chirognomy together fall under the umbrella of chirology and so okay. it's kind of confusing but um there's a bunch of different ways to read hands to answer your question simply i think palm reading is or palmistry is palm reading hand reading looking into the hands for information in any way you know whether it's the form or the lines okay and uh, is there a like any difference between vedic and the western side of palmistry or is it very same good question that's a question that i get a lot actually um all palmistry was first like the study of palm reading first came about by virtue of astrology and astrology has vedic roots to it so really in my research in my understanding of palmistry um i've been researching palmistry for almost 10 years i believe that all of western palmistry is a subcategory of vedic palmistry because vedic palmistry is older and therefore better established yeah because for usually for astrology it is said that uh, the egyptian astrology or western or all are contemporaries mm -hmm. like there is not something like who came first or anything but there is always yeah, exactly. a debate about whether vedic is first or egyptian or the greek is first yeah and you know um on that note there's a lot of people disagree people will disagree historians disagree some people say palm reading originated in india some people say it originated in china and it goes back um i mean in the vedic texts yeah. 2000 bc you know so it's like it was so long ago it's it's really hard to pinpoint also but, because um, uh, yeah yeah yes. also because uh, indus valley civilization is considered as the oldest uh, civilization uh, according mm -hmm. to historians and that was in the indian subcontinent so anything like palmistry or anything related to those things can be considered that those started to the vedic uh, tradition or the indian tradition yeah yes i i agree with you i i do want to make one more point on how western palmistry and vedic palmistry differ um now again this is on my own personal research um what i found the main difference is the heart line mm -hmm. vedic palmistry in general counts the years starting under the pinky ending yeah under the pointer finger that's a vedic palm reading western palm reading by far and large reads the heart line going in the opposite direction that is really honestly i think the main difference and both of them agree that age 45 is directly under the ring finger so it's like you know one person one methodology but, reads this way yeah 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 but uh, if it uh, starts from the opposite side mm -hmm. then how is it this will be the like 45 uh, years like how is it possible i agree with you well time is relative they talk about the the years recording on the because they say this is 25 relative 25. to time yeah uh, first finger they said that it is 25 uh, years and totally mm -hmm. 100 years of four fingers yeah so 
Now I study mostly Western palm reading. Yeah. Right. I've 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 studied Vedic palmistry just by virtue of studying palmistry. You know, it's always going to so, come up. Yeah. But as as someone from the United States, um, most of the palmistry that I've been exposed to has been of the Western variety, mm. and. Um, so I don't, so I don't really under, so I haven't looked into it in depth why Vedic palmists say that the line starts under the pinky finger and goes up to Jupiter. But for, for Western palm reading, we say that it all starts here in Jupiter and, yeah. you know, nothing against, nothing against Vedic palm reading, mm -hmm. but for me, that makes that makes more sense to me. Yeah, because even um, when I studied palmistry, I studied the same thing. Uh, you should start from mm -hmm. the Apollo finger and mm -hmm. you should come mm -hmm. from there uh, till the mm -hmm. last finger. So, I guess. Yeah, I mean, if everyone agrees that the Jupiter finger is the finger of God where the spark of life comes in. Yeah. So for me, that it makes sense that the years would travel coming from the Jupiter finger going across. Yeah. Um, also, another reason for me personally why I read the heart line in the traditional Western sense versus the Vedic sense mm -hmm. is that the heart line ending under Mercury, that's the marriage mount, okay? Yeah, that's going to come, that's later in life. That makes more sense to me. Um, all the lines flow out and end on the edge of the hands. So, again, you know, that's a palmistry. There's no... You know, people, it's, it's a study that has a lot of variety, a lot of different ideas and a, a lot of different methodologies. So that's just the one that resonates with me. But that is a main difference between that is, uh, one of the, Vedic like, this is the Western. biggest uh, difference between Western and Vedic. And there might be some other so. about lines or mounds or anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, definitely. And uh, are there any different techniques like, uh, in, for example, in Vedic astrology, there is KP Paddhati, like Krishna Murti Paddhati, then there is the, uh, the like, there are different types. For example, if you go to Kolkata, there's a different, mm -hmm. a different way of uh, marking the, uh, the mounting the horoscope. Then there's different yeah. in the Southern India, Northern India is different. So is there anything like that in palmistry? Good question. Um, Definitely. And now I'll speak to Western palmistry because again, you know, that's my specialty. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the big names in Western palmistry, you know, everyone knows Cheerio. Yeah. Um, and European palmist. A lot of people know um, D.R. Pejni and Desbaroles. Um, a lot of people also know Dr. William Benham from the United States um, and psychologist Ellen Goldberg. Those are the people who I, um, Goldberg and Benham, those are the two people who I really uh, closely follow. And really Ellen Goldberg is a disciple of William Benham. So I'm basically just talking about Dr. William Benham um, who studied the hands. He published like the dictionary on palm reading in the year 1900. The um, Sign the practical treatise on the laws of scientific hand reading. Anywho, so um, that's just a little bit of background information. So, as far as different practices, different ways of reading the hands, you know, um, these different big names in palm reading all have their own different kind of style. You know, yeah, some people say, some people read the hands, they say, oh, you have a conical shaped hand, oh, you have a spatulate hand. Mm -hmm. um, and they categorize the entire hand. Now, I don't, now some people do that. There has been a flaw in the system um, because a lot of people's fingers are shaped differently. So then they've um, modified it and they said, well, let's not classify the whole hand. Let's classify only the fingers um, because almost everybody has a mixed hand at this point. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, definitely different, different ways of, um, analyzing the hands and again largely unregulated field <laughs> um, because i know. feel like uh, palmistry doesn't have a lot of theory like it it is not a more theoretical it's more dependent on intuition or the way we can see like for example face reading like yeah. some people can just look at the face and uh, predict 
things mm-hmm. about them so there's no theory about it i feel it's more about intuitive or more depend on the experience uh, of the person i agree with you and speaking on terms of intuition and also face reading because um that's actually how i got into palm reading was i started studying face reading first and uh really got introduced to physiognomy in that way and then translated that to the hands but um you know a lot of that intuition i think has to do with how close are you how much can you tap tap into the universal subconscious mm-hmm. right isn't that what what intuition actually is is tapping into the universal subconscious being able to look at someone's face for instance looking into their eyes seeing that their soul is out of balance or whatever you know that's intuition but um i guess what is intuition you know is it just being extremely observant <laughs> because you for know? example like people who play chess like there are many times they can make moves within uh, within seconds mm-hmm. they can make 10 15 moves intuitively yes i think i think intuition comes with a lot of experience plus there is something mm-hmm. inside of some knowledge some kind of a like beyond scientific reasoning something that is uh there is some knowledge which just gives and i think a lot of it depends on the experience also lots of years a person have seen thousands of faces and uh, mm-hmm. that also helps but i think a lot I agree of with this you. also uh, builds the intuition well you know, i don't also, think there's um, something uh, like there might be some divine something force or which mm-hmm. i don't think so i think because i'm a very logical person so i feel like uh, experience plus uh, knowledge all these things combined can make intuition mhm that's what well, i well and you know and you know some people that's a that's a, that kind of brings us back to that subject on different methods of palm reading right so some people i don't some people have been famous palm readers who don't study scientific palm reading they are purely intuitive intuitive yeah. you know and i think that there needs to be a distinction created there you know there are some people who study um medical texts and who are reading uh, research and case studies for palm reading and then there's another category of people who are just gifted um psychically uh, they're car- they're clairvoyant they maybe they're you know they're intuitive types and so there really is uh there's another um difference there in palm reading too because there's some people who you know don't know about the significance of a mercury line in terms of health of the liver but they can look into the hand and for whatever reason they touch the hand and they realize oh there's something wrong with your liver you know this is just an example um so yeah it, there's there's just like so many sub categories of palm reading um they might be very good like uh, detective uh, like like for example sherlock holmes who could just see uh, <laughs> all things and he could uh, predict or get to know so yeah there might be many things but uh, yeah definitely yeah but uh, what if a person who is completely new to this uh, this subject and he wants to learn it or become an expert in it mm-hmm. uh, what should he do like go from basics like study theory and then slowly uh, start the practical or yeah I, i would say i would say read Dr. William Benham's book on palm reading that was published in the 1900s. Literally if you type in to Google palmistry benham and it's b e n h a m benham benham um if you just type that it's the first thing that's going to come up because all of our modern western palm readers all reference Dr. William Benham. He is like the pinnacle of palm reading. um and the western side of the world and anyone you have studied uh, through the vedic uh, side from the vedic side you know i haven't it's like every time i Just get into general, yeah. i mean yeah there it has been like i've seen youtube videos i've read mm. texts um with vedic palmist but you know it'll be something like for instance with the heart line mm. now I logically my mind it makes sense to me to read it the western way 
um, with the years going the opposite way. So it's like things like that will sometimes come up for me while I'm studying Vedic palm reading. And I'm thinking like, hmm, this, this doesn't really resonate with, with me for some reason. And so I, I always kind of start walking back to the path of these Western palm readers that are doing the scientific study. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, like anything else can a person study or just, just read books and uh, maybe start uh, looking at palms of friends and relatives and family. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks for getting us back on topic. I kind yeah. of will sometimes digress. Thank you. Uh, so reading Dr. Williams Benham's book um, for people who want to study palm reading. Also, it's it's just as important to be careful. It's just as important to be aware of what not to read mm -hmm. as it is of what to read. Don't look at magazines for palm reading information. Like really check, that's, that's my advice to anyone studying palm reading, really check your sources. Because in my own personal experience, um, for the first five years, I would just read anything that had anything to do with palm reading. And there's so much conflicting information. And so you don't wanna be absorbing the wrong information. So I'd say check your sources really carefully and make sure that you're reading someone who has credit and who has done the research um, in palm reading. Um, and also, uh, yeah, looking at friends' hands, looking at your hands. Again, another really important thing not to do, don't tell anyone how old you think they're gonna live to be. That's, yeah, that's, uh, that's the important rule in <laughs> astrology. Yeah, never to predict death yes. or exit, uh, harsh uh, accidents or anything like that. I'm, I'm glad that we're on the same page with that. Yeah, I, um, a lot of people whose hands I read, they'll, um, a lot of people haven't had their palm read before. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't surprise me because palmistry is such a niche uh, category. Yeah. It's subject. not as popular as uh, horoscope reading or numerology or anything. I agree with you. And a lot of people don't even realize that palm reading is part of astrology. A lot of people yeah. don't even understand that those things are actually really closely related. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, a lot. So the few people who have had their palm read by me, gosh, I'd say probably 70% of them have been told by a palm reader that they're going to die whenever they're 50 or something. This is another reason this contributes to the discredit that palm reading has in our society. So I'd say, yes, everyone who wants to learn palm reading, look into other people's hands, but be careful because you don't want to tarnish the reputation of palm reading by saying things that you're not sure about making predictions for people. That's going to put them off palm reading. So it's like, yes, but proceed with caution. <laughs> yeah. And also palmistry is more uh, about present, uh, like, a more nearer future. The predictions are uh, mainly based on the more nearer future mm -hmm. rather than the distant future. Yeah. You know, really, I would say um, palm reading is great for past, present, and future. Okay. Because um, the, the reason why like, palm uh, reading are ever changing, right? The lines mm -hmm. change. So maybe yes. what I have predicted Correct. back. It might not be the same right now. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So the so the lines in the hands reflect what's going on in the brain. Mm -hmm. And so you're right, the lines do change over time. Now, all of the lines don't change over time. And that's where we get into why palm reading is beneficial for past because a lot of people, you know, they want to get their fortune told, they want to know what's, what's going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. um, but I say palm reading is also very beneficial to make peace with the past, to understand the past. You know, some people, um, for instance, I read a woman's hand. She had, this is pretty common, you know, she had a, a mark on her hand from her childhood. She had a very traumatic event happen in her childhood. The mark is there on her hand and the way that the mark is laying there shows me, the palm reader, that it's still affecting her to this day, okay? So that's a past thing that's still happening in the present. And so 
that's why palm reading can be beneficial for past because a palm reader can say, oh, hey, like you're still carrying this around yeah. from the past, you know? And so it's really palm reading is a method of self-discovery appropriate for any phase of life, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but also just to speak quickly about the future, yes. Um, you can see palm reading, palmists can see how things are likely going to go for you. If you continue on the path that you're on, this is what is likely to happen. And, and that's the major how stuff like the marriage or the life expectancy. Or mm -hmm. the career, obviously. health. Career, yeah. And uh, do you have any examples of uh, like different uh, palms, like for example, a celebrity's palm or what is something unique? in someone's palm that you've seen or anything? Well, I have a, I just, I just have a picture of a hand that was sent to me that I can pull up and um, share my screen with you if you'd like. So I need to allow you to, or can you? Mm, share this? Okay. I can't. It says host has disabled participant screen sharing. Okay, wait a second. Yeah. I've never shared it. Oh, here we go. Yeah, even I'm very okay. beginner to this Zoom thing. Thanks. Okay, so yeah, here's a picture of a hand. Mm -hmm. um, every hand is different. Um, yeah. This is how I do. This is how I do my online palm readings. Is the pic? Is the client sends me a picture of their hand? But is it and then the cameras do justice? Uh, like uh, I'm sorry. It cut out a little bit. Uh, sorry, I can't hear you. I think your internet went. Hello. Can you? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, sorry. I think the phone cut out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, or the internet. What, what was your question? Yeah, my question was, uh, do the cameras do justice? Like, uh, like I don't mm -hmm. think uh, the exact picture uh, can be taken through a camera compared to real life? Well, yeah, if, if you're using a smartphone and you use the HDR um, mm. function, I think that it can, but I mean, look, you can see, you can even yeah, see the dermal ridges. Like, uh, the color of the hand, like pink or darkish uh, mm -hmm. blue or something, all those things are very difficult, not through camera. Yeah, so for online palm readings, you can get about 85% of the information. Yeah that you would it in would. person. Yeah. And, you know, really it's like some of those things, you know, I'm a, you know, I've looked at hundreds of hands. I can tell mm -hmm. as a palm reader, you know, the lighting doesn't have to be just so perfect. Okay. okay. You know, it's like, I can, I can look at it and tell, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's like, um, yes, you can get about, I would say about 85% of the information in an online palm reading versus in public, but, you know, I mean, that's still a lot of information that you can mm, get. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So here, let me, um, let me show, did you wanna, do you have any specific questions, Jay? Uh, you want me to show you anything specific? Like uh, what, what was the special, like what is uh, about this hand? I can see it's a very flat uh, mm -hmm. palm, which mm -hmm. is not considered yeah. as good, right? A very flat palm. Well, you know, some people would say that. Um, I would say a flat hand is significant. Well, whenever all the mounts are flat, and for those people who are tuning in who don't know what we're talking about, a flat hand is the palm. And it's whether or not there's cushy pads on yeah. the hand. Like I and have a lot so, of mounts, so yeah. Uh-huh. So you have a lot of energy coming into your hands. Um, and this person is considered to have less energy, but that's a Saturnian characteristic because Saturn is the flat mount. So anytime you see a hand that is flat, you mm -hmm. wanna look for other aspects on whether or not it's Saturn. And with the middle finger being Saturn, yeah. um, and it is standing out really strong in the hand, you know, so, so I'd say, yeah, that person to me is going to have more of a Saturnian characteristic. So then I'll have to look mm -hmm. in here 
I check, you know, yeah, the Saturn's set higher. Look at that apex of the mountain is up really high. Um, yeah. So yeah, so we're talking to a Saturnian. Right, right. Um, so again, you know, looking at the picture of the hand, you can see the different mounts. Yeah, I can also see the first finger um, is uh, of larger. The hand. Then the second, third, third finger, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then the ring finger. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if you were to divide the way that palmists measure fingers is you divide that, that first tip of Saturn in half. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is where the ring finger and the Jupiter finger are supposed to meet. And so, yeah, this person, uh, so this person, you could tell, uh, this person should be a teacher if they're not already a teacher. They've got the teacher fingers, very strong ambition, mm -hmm. leadership, um, being in the forefront. And then their research finger is also um, and you know what, actually, I just pulled this picture of a hand out of my collection, but I'm remembering this person actually was a college professor, um, and then changed her career. Uh, you know, I mean, look, she, it's amazing. She was talking to me about it. She was like, oh, I, th I think I might want to be getting into the divinatory arts. I might want to be doing astrology or tarot or something. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, here, this is a special mark that's called a mystic cross on the hand. Um, any cross that you see that is in the quadrangle right here mm -hmm. is considered a mystic cross. And so that's considered to be a mark that shows someone who has a natural ability for the occult sciences. Um, so that also they see the moon, uh, like if the mind, mm -hmm. the mental line, what we call it, mind line goes towards the moon mount is because I have like three. Yes. Like I have one. Oh, line you do. The, it makes three uh, lines. One goes towards Mercury, one goes towards moon like that. So, uh, yeah. so I know that. Well, well yeah. So I have that like shows three a very branches, versatile yeah. mind. Does it does it go to Mercury or does it go to Mars? You know what Don't I mean. Exactly, but uh, like because like see? at the at the end of I it's a, it's pixelated so I can't yeah, yeah, quite see but the webcam is not see how it. it's like it's like does it go up to here or does it go up to there? At the uh, end, no, it doesn't. The green line is still uh, lower, not exactly that. Up. Uh huh. So it's. It's kind of like does like and the one middle of those. one is perfect and one more goes uh, towards uh, more lower. Uh, no, uh, all the three are uh, lower for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, the good. Third, well, I mean, heck. Yeah. Well, so this lunar, now I know, you know, I'm just going to explain this for people who might be watching. Yeah, all are going um, to the uh, Okay, cool. So the lunar mount, you know, that, that represents the lunarian archetype, um, yeah. cancer in astrology, uh, the moon, mm -hmm. um, yin energy, it relates to the subconscious, your memory, creativity, working with the public, kind of like being up here, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you think about lunar, lunarians, lunatics, <laughs> all right so like the creative people mm -hmm. um so yeah so and I, I, I guess also client, very uh like not so social uh less of mm -hmm. social unless it is absolutely necessary yeah lunarians like to be by themselves they're very and good writers in the south like mm -hmm. i'm just uh, uh, saying my qualities so yeah good writers like intuition and mm -hmm. Deep language thinking. is very important for lunarians yeah, like i know six languages because especially because i'm in india so in india already people know more than three languages so wow kind of, but yeah well yeah so your hand is reflecting that perfectly yeah. for you um yeah so the lunar mount there you know it can also show travel um now look Look at the dermatoglyphics on my hand. Look, you can see, look at these different apexes. Yeah, yeah. 
So, uh, so you had, so we had talked about the different ways of reading a hand earlier and, you mm -hmm. know, there's the chirognomy, the chirology, the chiromacy. Yeah. There's also dermoglyphics, um, which is actually a medical study. I'm saying this out loud into the internet. Dermatoglyphics is a medical study practiced mm -hmm. right now, legitimate. <laughs> People do that. Doctors do this professionally right now in the year 2021. Mm -hmm. They study the dermal ridges for health to see what's going on a person's constitution. So it's like, you know, anyone who, because, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, is palm reading valid? Oh, how do you look at the hand? It's like, yes. Um, and palmistry just has a very uh, unfortunate history that has led to its discredit. But um, yeah, this area of the hand here is ripe. Look at all these, I'm, I'm gonna erase this. Mm -hmm. And because I want to point out those dermal ridges, and this is part of palm reading, you know, uh, I feel like a lot of palm reading just focuses on the form and the lines of the hands, but you can also read the dermal ridges. Look at all of this. Mm -hmm. This person has a nature loop in their hand. See yeah. how all those, see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a nature, that is considered, that's what we call a nature loop. That means the person really loves to be in nature. They need to be out. Um, that's like how they relax. Mm -hmm. And that goes in line with the Saturn mount because people who are Saturnians like to also be by themselves. They prefer the company of landscapes and animals to other people. Uh, Saturn and Luna have that in common. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, and then look, there's also that line that goes down that you had mentioned earlier. Mm. That, and you can see it faintly in here. Like there's another see, loop yeah. that goes down into a memory loop mm -hmm. in the hand, you know? So, you know, what does that mean? Well, based on how I read ages, that means, and look, so. Mm -hmm right around on the headline right around their saturn return right around 27 or 28 there's a big slope in the headline they become more imaginative they really let go they have some new experience yeah look you know it's it's marked on the headline it's also marked on the fate line look the fate line ends Right around 27 or 28. Now, you again, you know, I'm saying this based on my downwards method of reading. Or the upwards, like uh, from mm -hmm. the second finger or from the downwards, the fate line. So we say that, you know, because the lifeline goes this way. From up to right? down, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like from top to bottom. Birth to death, yeah. And then they say that the fate line gets its energy from what's left over. Okay, in the so lifeline okay so you have to check it from below to above mm -hmm. the fate line yeah and again yeah. you know this is some people read it differently but yeah, yeah, yeah. the the fate line i mean and that's what makes sense to me because the fate line's only present in about 50 percent of the hands in the world really oh so but it majorly yeah. means uh, uh, wealth, right? some people uh, don't even can sense of security, you know, uh, someone who's suffering from, um, someone's who's, someone who's suffering from um, unstable life, uh, someone who's, who's not feeling very confident in their root chakra, mm -hmm. somebody who's not feeling very secure, you know, they're, they're going to see that fate line's not, not going to be present. Um, okay. And yeah, so that's another reason why people say, you know, oh, that's wealth because wealth makes or health makes wealth, mm -hmm. you know, and it's and they're saying too, with the line coming down and ending and then coming back up. So that means that the fate line is actually a person who has extra energy in their hand. And also you know? it goes towards the Saturn uh, mount, like the it's not going exactly, yeah, it's ending in the middle. 
Yeah, it definitely, you're, you're looking at the, um, at the fate line over here. Yeah. So look at this. So this woman whose hand I read, it's hmm. coming back to me now that I have it in front of me again. So she was about 28. Look, so it, so it ends up here, um, right around 28, there's a big change. So it's marked on the fate line and on the headline. Yeah. And then it steps over, look, that fate line, you know, it kind of goes away, but really there's a fragment it that creates the mystic cross over here. Mm -hmm. right. um, you know, Richard Ugner is another um, palm meter. He's a professor at Berkeley, I think. Um, I found him on YouTube and he's, he's a philosopher and he studies palm reading. He says that the lines of the hands are poetry. Um, you know, they're energetic current. So you're just trying, you know, it's like, oh, is this a line? Is that a line? They're all lines, they're all there. They're all kind of flowing in a direction. So you can see that the fate line very strong and clear. Hmm. And then yeah. when it stops, it be, yeah. but it ends. Yeah. Yeah. When it stops, it really, um, you know, I mean, there's a little, you know, you could say maybe this is a fragment. They get more Apollonian as they become older, they get more in touch with those Apollonian characteristics. And that would make mm -hmm. sense because, you know, again, look at the dermal ridges under Apollo, you know, mm -hmm. there's almost even, it's like, what's going on? Look at how big that Apollo mount is, Yeah. you know? So, um, yeah, and that's, you know, for me personally, I find accuracy by checking different areas of the hand against each other. So for instance, that headline coming down into Luna you know, I'm like, well, why is that? Let, let me look at the fate line. Let me look at the heart line or the lifeline. Let me try to see what happened. Yeah. So I, I think the more significant thing is like, she has uh, like intuitive power, the like the knowledge of astrology or anything related to astrology or anything can easily mm -hmm. she can uh, learn it or practice it. And she loves nature, but she is kind of, kind of introvert. I think so. Yeah. yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. And the, and the reason why too is, you know, of course, because she has that Jupiterian ambition. Hmm. So and spirituality, that, uh, philosophy. Mm -hmm. And that Saturnian desire for research and learning yeah and she's know, not so maybe i go look over here mm -mm. you're 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 looking at this area to determine that uh yeah and also the mounts right the jupiter mount should be like mm -hmm. powerful to show more spiritual path i guess yeah like what no, do you see for well yeah you you right? can someone who leaves the material world and becomes a monk, especially in India, like many people uh, become monks. Mm -hmm. So for that, mm -hmm. what do you see? Uh, do you have any palm, which is uh, any spiritual person's palm or any monk's uh, palm? Like I have read some, I haven't read any monk's palms. Um, I mm -hmm. have seen online pictures of monk's palms and palmist reading them. So what's so significant um, in those uh, palms? Like, what do you see to uh, know? Like, it's a spiritual palm or? Very few lines. That's the number oh, one thing. Okay. Yeah, people who are very spiritual are going to have very few lines in their hands. And what do I mean by that? I mean that in people who meditate a lot, mm. Um, people who have a clear mind, you know, they don't have a lot of extra lines floating around. They're not carrying around a lot with them, you know? So like I, so these are the three major lines yeah. and, you know, like I said, 50% of people have the fate line. So some people disagree. They say that's a minor line. Some people say it's a major line, whatever. Um, I'll go ahead and mark it on here anyway. 
Um, so boom. All right. So those are the major lines. Yeah. Someone who meditates, they're probably only going to have these lines. They're not going to have these extra little lines rummaging around in here. They're not going to have this extra stuff, you know, um, look these extra lines. I could have done them in a different color mm. to make them easier to see uh, the difference, but you see, these are all, you know, there's nothing wrong with having these types of lines. We call this fire. Um, they've got a lot of deeply marked fiery lines in their hands. Look at this, you know, look at all these little extra lines they have. Um, mm. That's not a bad thing. That just means that they're someone who has very strong feelings. You know, um, they can be very impassioned. They can be intense people. Mm. That's not a bad thing. That's just a personality type. Monks yeah. aren't usually like that, right? <laughs> so yeah, they don't yeah. have very many lines yeah. in their hand. Okay. And I think that and also, be something... you know, a monk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, go ahead. What were you going to say? No, I was saying that uh, the Mount of Jupiter or Saturn might be having something significant to determine a spiritual path. Or... I agree with you. And also the tip of Jupiter, this one's pretty pointed. Oh, yeah. It might, it might be more, more pointed for someone who's more spiritual, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. their thumb. Also, yeah. Also the phalange, uh, the upper is more uh, bigger compared to the mm -hmm. middle and the lower one. Correct. Because that's the mental area. Yeah. So here I will draw. That's Jay's talking about this one mm -hmm. right here, that these would be longer and more significant in the hand because that represents the mental world. Also, you know, the thumb. Uh, maybe the thumb's extra big, you know, people who are, who can be disciplined, mm. you know, they have to have a lot of willpower. Um, I'd say that is like a monk quality, a spiritual quality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. You know, and so there's a lot of different aspects to look at in the hands. Mm. Let's see. Um, you know, what else do we want to look at? Oh, here's a, do you want me to point out one more thing about the hand that I think yeah. is significant? Um, well, I mean, I thought of two things, but I'll point out this one uh, because it's not talked about as often. I want to talk about um, the quality of so here's this person's headline, right? There's like a little extra down here. Yeah. Right. So there's their headline. I'm going to mark this is the heart line, mm. right? Um, this is kind of a rough estimate. Okay. So I talked earlier about that space in between the headline and the heart line. And that's called the quadrangle. This is an area that I think, you know, hardly anyone talks about and they ought to. It's this area in here that I've colored blue. Yeah, because um, two significant lines are uh, going through that area. So. Exactly. And, you know, uh, we're talking, this, uh, this signifies the relationship between the head and the heart. So that's another way to look into someone's hand and kind of gauge mm -hmm. how they're feeling about life at the moment. How much struggle are they enduring right now? Mm -hmm. You know? So, you know, roughly. Now, again, um, the way that I mark years might be different from the way that you mark years based on our different research. Um, I'll share with you, I say right in the middle of Saturn going down mm -hmm. is about 25. And then right in the middle of the ring finger going down is about 45. And, you know, 
intuition at play you know you have to kind of adjust things a little bit looking at the hand but in general that's a rough guesstimate mm -hmm. um and so look look at the distance look at how easy things are relatively speaking you know in life look at that distance and then look and it opens back up again um so more distance so what does that is good? show me yeah because it's more relaxed. Look at this oh, area in here. Okay. Look at how so the narrow is that area is. And the mind is in its place, like something like that. There's no complications. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. so if you're looking at this space in between 25 and 45. Okay. During that time, maybe there might be. Those two are very some, close to each other. Yeah. So there might be some chaos related to heart and turmoil. Mind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe relationships or anything. Yeah. Like that. Particularly, yeah, right around 35, um, because that's right where it really pinches. Mm -hmm. um, the head is looking to the heart, the heart is looking to the head, they're having some difficulty. Yeah. Right around 35. Um, you know, and I'll say that, you know, some people, let me just get rid of all this for a second. And let me just redraw another example. You know, some people's heart lines could be more like that and their headline could be yeah and their headline could could be more like that okay so a very you know, smooth life that like would life yeah okay yeah it's it's kind of even the whole way through no some people <laughs> might have yeah some people might have one that kind of does that you know, um, and you could see, wow, this person has a really hard time yeah. where it gets really close together, you know? Yeah. Um, so, you know, and again, all of these things, you look at the lines, but then you also want to look at um, other factors in the hand. It's not just this one thing, you know, it's like, that's an indicator that says, oh, well, maybe around 35, they have this complication. And then, so then you have to look into the hands further and say, what is that complication? What could it be? Where is it coming from? Do I see any chance lines running to different mounts to indicate information? Uh, do I see any discoloration? Do I see any chains um, or splits on the line? Like there's so many different ways to categorize this. Yeah. But yeah, that's the quadrangle. That mm. is a very significant area of the hand. I feel like a lot of people don't talk about it. If they do, they talk about it in relation to it being the plane of Mars or yeah. Raku, I think, in Vedic palm yeah. reading. Is Raul that right? Is, yeah, yeah. Raul, Raul, thank you. Um, also, but yeah, that's no, uh, yeah, yeah, it's I uh, then where's the K2? I totally forgot. Yeah, I have, I have, there's, I, I forget K2. the different yes. names. No, because both are completely opposite, uh, polar opposites the north node and the mm -hmm. south node. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Rahu signifies a... uh, more material things, and K2 signifies more, uh, signifies more uh, spiritual or intuition and all those stuff. So it's completely thank totally you. Different. Yeah, I uh, but even I forgot. Uh, I think the middle one is, <laughs> I guess, but I don't remember now. Yeah, I know. I that's and you know, as I as I progress through life and spend another 10 years studying palm reading, I'm sure that I will become more familiar with Vedic palm reading. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. I, you know, um, right now I'm still kind of like perfecting the category that I've chosen first which is western so um but yeah I did I do know because they talk about this area you hear here I'll erase this and because yeah you were talking about you're talking because you know they say they've got Mars over here you got Mars over here yeah Mars and then three places and then in the center you've got Two places, yeah. This yeah, kind places. of weird shape there. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, are the three planes of Mars. But yeah, um, 
you know, and people ask me too, they'll be like, well, how long can you read a hand? Because most of the time, most people who read palms, it's one hour. Is that the same for Vedic palm reading? Like I have never done my palm, palm reading, but I guess, I guess it might, I, do, I don't think it, it takes mm. too much time. I think it's like 15, 20 minutes, maybe. I don't know. I think it's uh, very subjective, mm. right? Uh, depends on the uh, on the palmistry person, the one who is reading the palm, I guess. Yeah. I so for example, like... if uh, I'm doing a horoscope reading, I'll do it for one hour or I can also do it for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. The more you have time, the more you can uh, get more into the more nuances, the little things. About exactly. The yeah. Exactly. And it's, you know, for me personally, and again, you know, I think that's another way to kind of check if you are someone who's getting your palm read, you yeah. know, does the palm reader, people who are reading palms intuitively, mm -hmm. you know, based on their psychic ability, they take less time. They can pick up the hand and then they get a feeling or whatever, you know, and then they can tell you the fortune really quickly. I feel like, um, for me personally, and for the palm readers who I study under, they recommend looking at the hand for three to five minutes, just looking at the hand before yeah. even saying anything to the client. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, you have to take in all that information. Now, you know, there have been times that I have, particularly whenever I was brand new at palm reading, you know, and mm -hmm. I realized earlier, I advised people to be careful about what they say to other people whenever they're trying out palm reading for the first time and they're just getting used to it. Whenever I first started, you know, sometimes I would say things that looking back on it, I had no scientific reasoning for telling someone this aspect about their lives, but maybe, but it was based on intuition, you know? So it's like, you wanna, you, you want to, I think, you know, you want to have a mix. You want to have someone who's educated in hand yeah, analysis are, yeah. and also intuitive. Because there are many things that come, like, for example, uh, you have to look at the person, what he wants, like, mm -hmm. not what he wants to hear, but what kind of questions he, he or she has, or you have to, like, you have to also have some deeper knowledge about spirituality, philosophy, about life, the, your own experience about life, all these things together uh, make a good reading. Because you just cannot Absolutely. just read and just uh, predict that, okay, you are going to earn this much or you are going to live this much. That's not what the person wants. You want mm -hmm. to get into uh, more psychology, the mental aspect, the more towards like how a person will be happy or sad or like uh, all those things. So I feel like many things uh, come into play. Well, I agree with you. And, you know, I think also it's important for anyone who's reading palms to think about, you know, why has this person come to you and asked for uh, personal knowledge for they're, they're, they're trying to better themselves. They're trying mm -hmm. to know themselves better. They're trying to understand themselves. This is a means of self-development, self-improvement, mm -hmm. you know, um, it can be very easy for a palm reader to get into a space, you know, um, and I find this particularly true in the United States. There's a lot of stigma around palm reading. A lot of people think, you know, oh, you're just making stuff up. Mm -hmm. And so I think because of that stigma, I think a lot of palm readers feel pressure to tell them a bunch of stuff and to just kind of like show off almost and say like, oh, well, yeah, you know, here's this, here's that. With uh, anything like astrology or numerology, mm -hmm. uh, because in all those stuff, it's not necessarily the person who is reading the palm or uh, reading the horoscope is, has the knowledge. Like, But I think uh, a person can easily judge by the predictions or the by initial mm -hmm. uh, uh, predictions that a person can judge that, okay, is uh, no. bullshitting or he's saying the truth yeah so yeah I feel yeah sometimes and that's something that 
people will warn about all the time is they'll say, you know, make sure that you're reading the hand for the best um, purpose of the other person with the best intention for the other person and not just to show off and that's your the reason skills. the spiritual <laughs> and uh, philosophical and psychological all these things uh, all this knowledge is important because a person mm-hmm. who has all this knowledge uh, wouldn't necessarily like it's there are less chances of he will do a show off or anything like that like a spiritual mm-hmm. person will not have ego about uh, yeah. show, like doing some show off or anything uh anything else uh, you want to talk about well i'm i'm interested yeah sorry i'm interested to know how i'm interested to know your introduction to palm reading and astrology uh yeah so uh, you can stop sharing uh, if you want like oh thank you yeah so like my mom is uh, like is into palmistry and astrology since uh, she was in her 20s i guess so she's in now mm-hmm. in her 60s so it's been like 40 years but yeah i i'm a very skeptical and logical person so i never used to believe in all those things but then uh, when i was 21 my father passed away and after that i just got into all this thing because i want to know like what happened or mm-hmm. is there anything that can give an answer or anything so i got into mm-hmm. astrology and then i did a course uh, like a proper uh, course into of about astrology where they also taught palmistry numerology all those things but the main focus was astrology vedic astrology mm-hmm. especially and yeah and i used to read and uh, just read about all this stuff and uh, slowly and steadily i i somehow fell in love with philosophy uh, especially mm-hmm. the eastern philosophy so i started reading about advaita vedanta then i re- i'm i read about jainism and uh, right now i've been studying jainism in a very uh, a very deep uh, and i also follow jainism so yeah and also i'm studying a bit of buddhism so the eastern philosophy the three major religions of india amazing so yeah but i this is a funny thing because when i used to be in my teenage uh, years i was very material not materialistic but i was all about success i i used mm-hmm. to go to college and go to work and do other courses so that i can achieve success fast i was very that kind of a person uh, about mm-hmm. uh, achieving the material success and right now i'm completely opposite like i feel like just retiring from this uh, <laughs> work and just focus on studying and researching about uh, spirituality so i don't know how this major change happened but it happened within like 10 years do you have a long do you have a long mercury finger uh, out of curiosity i have long fingers i guess mhm yeah look at that I'm curious because you know, just everything you're saying about. I do have pointed about... fingers, kind of. Mm-hmm. So I guess. Yeah, that that I everything you're talking about with the working a lot and being very like success oriented. And I also so have all material. the material uh, lines, the the faith line, mm. the sun line, and also the Mercury line. So that's oh, amazing. Reason. I guess that's the reason I started working too early and I did a lot of different jobs. I had a lot of degrees and all those stuff. But right now I don't, I just want to go towards Jupiter and Saturn. Like, <laughs> but I've also read that uh, a very good mount, like a very, uh, what do yeah. you call it? The, yeah, that mount yeah. is good. So I feel like, yeah. I hope I uh, follow the path of spirituality. Especially being I think a, you will. Yeah. Being a Jain person, like the dream is to become a monk, like to leave this material mm-hmm. world and go towards the ultimate path. I don't know whether it will happen, but I wish it happens. Yeah, well, I mean, heck, you know, you have those, all the extra minor lines in your hands are considered. Yeah, um, think, uh, because of the camera, very, it's not exactly uh-huh. visible, but yeah. No, I mean I can I can see two of them. I can't see Mercury very well on my side, but I believe you. And I can see the the Mount of Jupiter. Yeah, so prominent. Yeah. Even look at how whenever you hold your hands, look at how much your pinky even bends back. Mm-hmm. Look at when whenever you did it, I saw that top joint bending back. Yeah. You know, showing mental flexibility mm-hmm. on those and mercurial also this, qualities. Uh, this line is from here and it divides into three. Huh? three different uh, branches one two and three yeah dang look at you i don't know what that what's means. that 
is that the the straight across line that's coming uh, out see, really strong in the video is is that a headline or yeah, a heart line? See, it's uh, till here and then it takes three turns like three branches like one mm -hmm. two and three and the, mm -hmm. this one goes till end this also goes till here mm -hmm. and this one is till here but it fades away. where's your where's your heart line up top I also have one extra line here. I don't know what it means. I've never oh, done this video, but I have this extra okay. line. But this is my heart line, I guess. This is my heart line. This is my I heart feel line. like you have almost, you know, what do you think about simian lines? Uh sorry, I, I have no I've never heard that word. A simian line is the headline and the heart line together. This is the heart line, this is the headline. Yeah, it's not mm -hmm. too far, but it goes far as as mm -hmm. it increases but yeah initially it is same like it comes from the same thing and i have this extra line i don't know what it means but it has it is there yeah honestly i think you have what what i would consider a simian line and okay. then you have a fragment the headline separates and the heart line separates but that line is very strong running together Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, that's just more, you know, of that will determination, you know, being able to be very, people like that usually are very led by the head or they're very led by the heart. You mm -hmm. seem like a person who's more led by the head. Yeah, yeah, I've always been like that. So I, I don't know why, but I've always been. <laughs> I also have a very prominent Saturn, like Saturn is in my ascendant. So it's in my first house. Mm. And also I, my moon sign is Capricorn. So it's also ruled by what's, Saturn. What's your rising? Uh, Aquarius. Oh, cool. According to both, and then, the Vedic and the Western both, it's Aquarius. And I have and your sun? Retrograde, retrograde, but yeah. And your sun sign? Sun sign is Leo, opposite to Saturn. 7,000 oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, I mean, that, that moon in Capricorn, I mean, you know more about astrology than I do. Yeah, the um, uh, defines all this stuff, right? Yeah. Like writing and intuition and all those things. But I yeah. like this, the Saturn and Sun. Both are very prominent, but both are opposite to each other. Mm -hmm. And in that own my, uh, my Saturn's in Capricorn. Okay. Um, and According I'm, to I'm Vedic or Western because there's a 24 degree difference. Huh? Western. Okay, so it might be in Sagittarius. Like, like if, mm. what what are the degrees? Do you know the degrees of Saturn? Yeah, you know, I I had it pulled up. Um, I felt like it was in my first house, but is the first house exclusive only to your rising? Okay. You know, so yeah, it's like that's um, that's something for me to learn about more. I know that with astrology, Western astrology is fixed, and then Vedic moves. Is that correct? No, no, no. It's opposite. The Vedic is fixed, oh, okay. and Western moves. That's the reason oh. Western is twenty-four degrees ahead. So if let's say I am a Capricorn moon in uh, Vedic, that means I'm an Aquarius moon in uh, Western. So that's the difference mm. because they have moving. That's but I've seen more into. results according to the Vedic astrology because I've been studying that and researching and on that. But I don't know. Many people say that uh, both are same, but I don't feel like it's same because uh, according to Vedic, I'm a Capricorn moon, and according to Western, I'm a Aquarius mm -hmm. moon. So it's completely opposite. So how can it mm -hmm. be? Same? I don't know. The people who say that Vedic and Western both are same, the predictions are same. I don't feel. How can both be same? If mm -hmm. the houses changes, the sign also change. I don't understand. Good question. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that my only exposure to astrology has been through palm reading. Yeah. So it's like, you know, learning the different qualities of the planets and the different qualities of the zodiac signs and where they're located in the hand. But I don't know anything about the different degrees or houses, um, which I know is a very important part of astrology. <laughs> Yeah, but I haven't made it there yet. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was an amazing, great podcast. And uh, it, like, there was so much information, so much knowledge, and so much to learn through this podcast. 
and uh, i'll just like to the viewers who have watched the entire podcast thank you so much for watching and we'll do some uh, more podcast on such topics so yeah thanks for watching